Good morning. Welcome to the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. This is MT Clark, and this Zoom meeting is going to be uh, the Celebrate Freedom Discipleship Course, Lesson 6 on worship. And um, as I've stated before in the previous lessons, this this uh, this course was developed by me um, during 2020 when I was doing my master's thesis in Christian counseling on Christian recovery. And um, this course was developed to fill in the uh, fill in the blanks between the steps, the 12 steps of the Christian recovery program or the eight principles of the Celebrate Recovery program to uh, infuse Christian discipleship principles uh, that I discovered that were um, fundamental in my recovery and my walk of faith. And uh, so I developed six lessons on things that I thought were important uh, for the Christian to know, especially for the Christian who is in recovery to know, to um, transform one's life to a life of discipleship. And so we did lessons on uh, the kingdom, identity, uh, the enemy, uh, the Holy Spirit, ascension, uh, basically progressive uh, sanctification. And today we're doing worship. And so without further ado, we're going to share our screen and jump into today's lesson. Let's see. All right. And so we'll see how that goes. Uh, so uh, here we are at Worship, Celebrate Freedom Discipleship Course Lesson 6 by me, M.T. Clark. And we move along. And so, yeah, we're going to fumble with the Zoom a little. Anyway, Discipleship Principle 6 says, Our lives are to be an expression of our love for the Lord, a continuous act of worship, uh, where our hearts of stone must be turned to flesh and beat to know and love the Lord more and more. Uh, in John 4, 23 and 24, Jesus says, uh, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. A major problem with the body of Christ is the twofold problem of ignorance and or a lack of application of the disciples call to worship. Uh, the life-transforming power of worship cannot be understated as it can break down the barriers between knowing God intellectually and knowing and loving God experientially. A life of worship is living in the context of our faith where we rejoice over being rescued and given a new and eternal life that we get to experience here and now. This lesson's purpose is to encourage followers of Jesus Christ to use their lives as an act of worship and a continuous expression of our love for the Lord. Uh, Jesus said to him uh, in Matthew 22, 37 and 38, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. So we try to be obedient with that, with the way we live. And we move along to community worship, the local church. Hebrews 10, 24, and 25 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And his, his return is drawing near, closer and closer every day into the future. Uh, the most obvious act of worship is to attend the worship services at a local church. Church services contain elements of prayer, praise, and scripture reading as the purpose of Christians gathering together is to give worship and glory to God and to instruct, encourage, and motivate the body of Christ to follow Christ's example. The church teaches Christians how to offer continuous worship to the Lord with their lives by teaching its members how to approach God, know him, praise him, and communicate with him. Uh, prayer, <clears throat> praise, and Bible study are disciplines that Christians can take outside of the four walls of the church building into their private lives and the community at large. Our community gathering is to serve the purpose to worship the Lord and to encourage one another in doing so. 
Regular attendance and support of the local church are necessary components in our lives of worship. While we tend to focus on our individual journey and relationship with God, in no way should our membership to a local church body be forsaken. Engagement in the local church is the primary way to learn, grow, and mature in our Christian faith. Individual worship, our daily practices of faith. Romans 12, 1 tells us, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. While church services may be once or twice a week, we are to worship the Lord continuously with our very lives. A daily practice of worship and communion with God is our reasonable service and is the foundation for a deep personal relationship with the Lord. If our attention and hearts are directed to God, we are blessed by his presence, guidance, strength, and love. Our daily practice of worship will go beyond traditional uh, Christian disciplines as we mature in the love of the Lord. Worship with prayer. Psalm 95, 6 says, O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. In Colossians 4, Colossians 4, 2 tells us to continue, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it, vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Prayer, from silent prayers to simple conversations with God, our first act of worship is to communicate with God. Our faith in God is demonstrated through our regular communication with him through prayer making our needs and thoughts known, uh, offering our, our observations on life, and petitioning the Lord on behalf of others. The more we pray to the Lord, the deeper our relationship with him becomes as we place ourselves humbly before his presence and reverence and love. And we can worship with Bible study. In John 6, 63, Jesus tells us, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Bible study. Whether integrated into prayer or studied separately, a time to read and reflect on the word of God is one of the most effective ways to know the heart of God and to hear his voice as he reveals himself through his word. Our lives are transformed by integrating his wisdom into our lives. To read, to understand, and to be changed by his word is the full intention of Bible study. And, we're, and Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intentions, intents of the heart. And, uh, you know, that verse tells us that the word of God is alive and it works within us, um, you know, to change our hearts. And it also indicates here that it's a discerner of the thought, the thoughts and intents of the heart. That means as we're reading the word of God, it's reading us. It knows when we come to it, you know, in sincerity or when we're just going through the motions. And so we, that's a big thing about the, you know, worshiping in spirit and truth is our, the spirit we bring to our Bible study and the other disciplines of our faith. We worship with our walk, um, with gratitude and meditation. Um, as we go about our day and walk through this life, we can worship God and express our love for him through our demonstration of our identity in Christ through the way we live. We give thanks. Our worship of God begins and continues each day with a regular practice of gratitude, where we give thanks to the Lord for the blessings in our life and the things we encounter, re uh, remembering his provision and his protection as we experience them. And we meditate. We remind ourselves of our salvation and freedom in Christ and renew our mind with God's word as we shape our thoughts attitudes and actions to be consistent with our new life and thus join in harmony with god's will and ways for our lives another way we can worship with our walk is through repentance we repent we worship god by speaking the truth and progressively turning from our old ways 
We consider our old ways to be to no longer be a part of who we are. We recognize that we have been given the power to overcome and need only utilize it by living according to our new life in Christ. Our old habits are surrendered for a higher call and a higher purpose. We admit to the harmful effects our habits inflicted on our minds, bodies, and our relationship with God's and others. Instead of fondly remembering our old habits, we examine them with the light of truth and expose the darkness, desperation, and futile nature of how we were seeking happiness and fulfillment without God. And, um, you know, the Lord taught, uh, the Lord said to teach them to repent and believe. And so we repent. And we worship with our walk by the way we love the Lord. We love. Our successful adaptation of our identity in Christ cannot be simply the product of mental ascent or a work of cognitive therapy alone. We must love the Lord for who he is and for what he has done for us. If our actions are motivated by love and a desire to express our love for God, we will grow because we are acting and thinking in a way that is approved by him. While we will never be able to earn God's love, we will accept the fact that we are worthy of his love because he said we are. If we are worthy, the Lord has given us the power to express our worthiness through thought and action. We can change because of the love we have received. As we grow, we share the love of God we have received with others by sharing our hope and through performing good works motivated by love. As we progress and have the revelation of our ability to love him, we begin to proclaim our love mentally or verbally to God continuously. And that's just, it might sound like a silly practice, but to uh, to proclaim your love for the Lord. I love you, Lord. Uh, as you go about your day, you know, thank you, God is good, but I love you, Lord is good too. And, uh, you know, it, it's you know, it it really cements the relationship with the Lord when we tell him we love him. So, um, and we can express our love, you know, to one another as well in the body of Christ by, by the things we say and do. Um, we demonstrate that we are loved and um, we can share the love of God with others. And we can worship with our work. Or, well, well, actually, we forgive. You have to forgive me. I'll up, I'll update that later. Um, but we worship with our forgiveness, with our walk with forgiveness. Mm -mm, my bad. Um, we forgive. Having been forgiven, so please forgive me. Having been forgiven of everything we have ever done, we obey the word of God and forgive others as an act of worship. We let go of our hurt and offense. We devo we de Our default response becomes forgiveness. While we can protect ourselves and advocate for what is right, we will forgive because we have been forgiven. We forgive others the worst because we are not the judge. God is. He will repay. We instead forgive and pray for the transgressor to come to God, to know God's love and forgiveness and to repent. Forgiveness is a spiritual discipline that requires practice. As we learn to forgive the small things that pop up in our daily experience moment to moment, we will gain the skill of forgiveness. While we are not saying we must forgive everything done against us in the past immediately, we are setting ourselves on a course to realize that goal. Uh, the goal of peace can be reached through forgiveness. And um, Colossians 3.13 reminds us, remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. So forgiveness is a big part of letting go of the hurts uh, that we have in life and uh, surrendering people to the Lord. Uh, I forgive them, Lord. I give them to you to deal with in terms of judgment and, um, you know, help me to move on. And to be healed through forgiveness. And we're now on worship with our work, um, where we work for the glory of the Lord. Our work is another place where we can worship the Lord and give him glory. Wherever we are in our professional lives, we are to worship the Lord by representing the kingdom of God to the best of our abilities through our work performance and interactions. While there are, may be limits to outright evangelism at work, everyone at our place of work should know that we are Christian. 
While we are there to work, moments of personal conversation should be utilized to give our testimony of God's goodness, the truth of Jesus Christ, and to encourage others to follow him. When coworkers encounter loss or disease or need help, we need to offer our prayers, counsel, and hope. Our conduct should represent that of a servant, performing our, our duties morally, faithfully, and to the best of our abilities. And 1 Corinthians 10.31 encourages us in that regard, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God, including our work. And bridging the heart and the mind and heart, worship with praise. Um, Isaiah 61 3 tells us to console the mourners in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for a spirit of despair, so that they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that may be glorified. Other versions call that spirit. Uh, the garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness or, a, uh, uh, and, and so, you know, that spirit of despair or heaviness, the remedy for it or a lack of affection for God is to worship the Lord through praise. Those whose faith is in their head can use the key of praise to experience the truth of God's love in their hearts and to transform their relationship with God. Ephesians 5, 18 through 20 tells us, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, these verses reveal uh, the spiritual reality that our worship of God with praise and thanksgiving is directly related to the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the presence of God. Earnestly seeking the Lord through praise can open up a whole new dimension to one's faith as the Holy Spirit will bring joy and revelations of biblical truth in the midst of genuine enthusiastic praise. Praise takes the power of the spoken word of God and brings it up a notch as the word is lifted in exaltation to the Lord. During praise, the Holy Spirit will bring into remembrance moments from your journey in Christ will encourage and exhort you to keep going and to take steps in new directions and reveal to you new things. Worship with singing. Uh, Psalm 9-2 says, I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Scripture repeatedly commands us to praise the Lord with song, indicating a loud and lively expression of our praises. Holy Scripture indicates that praise can and should be done as a private individual practice. If we are timid or concerned with what others will think of us when we worship, we can eliminate those concerns by praising the Lord in the privacy of our homes, where we can prepare our favorite songs and praise the Lord completely uninhibited. We can even take our individual praise on the road with us and sing to the Lord in the car as we commute through our day. Um, God is always with us, so it is appropriate to sing his praises whenever the opportunity arises. Our lives should be a continuous soundtrack of praise to the Lord. Drawing closer to God, worship with dance. Psalm 149.3 says, let, uh, let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and, and lyre. Praise as an individual practice draws you into a deep relationship with the Lord as you are continuously bringing the presence of the Lord into your environment as you bring honor and glory to him. Praise also lifts our spirits by keeping our spiritual eyes on the Lord, and it renews our mind as we are proclaiming our identity in Christ with a musical demonstration of our faith. With every song of praise, we are binding ourselves to the Lord and reminding ourselves that we are experiencing our new life in Christ and that our membership in the kingdom of God is an undeniable fact as our fruit of praise shows that the Lord has our heart. As we praise privately, we can even incorporate the joy of dancing for the Lord into our practice. Dancing, raising our hands, clapping and stomping, uh, stomping our feet to music engage one's entire body as an act of worship. 
exercising the body as well as the spirit. Uh, for those too timid to ever dance in public, a private practice of praise allows us to pour out devotion to the Lord without limits. So praise alone. And then worship with corporate praise. Our private practice of praise prepares us for corporate praise. As we praise privately, we become more confident to join and to contribute to the enthousi enthusiastic praise at corporate gatherings. As we learn to unashamedly praise the Lord publicly, we become an encouragement to our brothers and sisters in Christ to do likewise. While our praises are directed to the Lord, they become an object lesson to others. That loud, enthusiastic praise is an appropriate expression of our faith, and we can rejoice in it together. Our corporate praise edifies one another and brings us to, uh, together as a community joined together brings us closer together as a community joined together by the love of God. And Psalm 34, 3 tells us, glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And worship, it's the, the heart of the matter. All the various ways to worship the Lord that we have presented are to be done with the heart of worship, with genuine heartfelt devotion and love for God as a part of our daily Christian lifestyle. Our faith is not a political ideology or a philosophy of living with its principles and precepts. Our faith is a relationship. It's a love relationship. And so the power of worship to transform us must be fueled by the, a love for God. The defining characteristic of a Christian is the love we have for God and the love that overflows from that relationship to others. And finally, we'll wrap it up. As disciples of Jesus Christ, our worship goes beyond a weekly observance. Our lives become a continuous expression of our love for the Lord as we incorporate incorporate, <laughs> incorporate uh, various Christian practices to maintain and mature our relationship with Him. More than in intellectual study or following a moral code of ethics, our lives of worship are a spiritual practice that seeks the infinite wisdom of the Lord, not to know facts or to show ourselves approved, but to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the one who first loved us. Our obedience to biblical principles isn't done out of a fear of punishment or out of, of, of doing one's duty as much as it is our heartfelt response to demonstrate our love and understanding of God. The importance of a heart connection to our faith is what makes Christ, Christ's burden a light burden, as we can endure anything for the one we love. Praise as a private spiritual practice is recommended to bridge the mind and heart of faith together and to develop a deep experiential bond to the Lord. Regardless of which spiritual discipline we practice, His presence is experienced the more we seek Him with our hearts and minds, worshiping Him in spirit and in truth. And that is the end of our, our, our presentation and the end of lesson six of the Celebrate Freedom Discipleship course. Um, and what we're trying to express is that, uh, you know, our, our relationship with God is just that. It's a, a relationship. It's, it's not a religion with rules and regulations. It's an expression uh, of our love for him. And uh, we're just, we're trying to pay attention to our teacher, Christ, who came to show us the way, the, the truth and the life that he has for us when we put our faith in him and, and follow him, things become great um, as we have a new life that we can live out here and now on earth and we can share and show the love of God when we live according to our faith. Uh, all the negative mind states, addictions and everything can fall away when we come in line with God's word and start living according to it. And um, and and I'm, I'm hopeful that this lesson teaches that it's to be done as an expression of our love, that our worship is, is the most appropriate thing we can do is to worship him and to worship him with everything we do. So um, I appreciate everyone who's tuned in. Um, I'm actually recording this on Christmas Eve. So Merry Christmas to everyone in 2023. And uh, 
any, everyone beyond. <laughs> um, I really appreciate the fact that people are checking out the YouTube uh, teachings and um, the podcast, and uh, we we want to thank you for that. For that, it's an encouragement to me. And let, let's pray us out. I should have prayed us in, but we'll pray out. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day in your kingdom. Lord, thank you for showing us how to worship you uh, in spirit and truth through your word and through um, the example of Jesus and the example of all the, the faithful men and women of God that come before us. Lord, we just pray for you to guide us into uh, that spirit and truth worship uh, that you want us to know. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and minds to all that you have for us and to show us the way you want us to go um, as a lifestyle of worship. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And so that's from me, M.T. Clark, to you. We say thank you, and uh, God bless you all. <laughs>